you create your reality by the lens or perspective you choose to see the world through. Receive or miss your calling through the energy you harness from that lens. The choice is yours. Welcome to the Donna One Podcast. First of all, um, it's been a while since I actually did one of these like proper podcast videos. And obviously it's because I've been working on a lot of things, but I'm happy to be here now because I think the topic I'm about to discuss is very important for, for the current climate and also the future climate that we would love to see. Shout out to my bro Prince. He's behind the mic. He's held me down for so long. I'm currently in London working on a couple of things as well, but COVID has held me down. So shout out everyone that has been supporting me and I really love and appreciate it. But yeah, if you pick up your phone right now, I'm very sure what you'd see is something that I feel has been pending for the longest time. When I say the longest time, I even mean boiling down back to Malcolm X, MLK days because um, one of the reasons why <laughs> Martin Luther King said I have a dream is because he had a structure. You know, this is a man that other than the fact that he was rallying a generation of people to actually speak against the system of oppression that had been, you know, making his people suffer for so long, he also had different things in place that would like enable those same people to actually generate an economy, you know. So he had gained leverage at home. He also gained leverage in Africa because he had a lot of African leaders as friends, you know. So and and if you notice even even like people like Gaddafi, people like Mandela, they all had that African pan African, you know, message of look, we need to come together because, you know, we've been oppressed. And for the longest of time, yeah, I think what America has been able to do is America has been able to convince the world that their enemies should be our enemies and when you actually peel the curtains off especially as a black man the one thing you realize is america's sole goal is to conquer that's its sole goal right it's why it's competing with china it's why it's competing with russia that's the sole goal of the american government now because of what america has been sold to the world to be which is the land of the free a lot of people gloss over the intricate of what actually makes that system tick now that system the foundation of that system is black blood period and when i say black blood i'm not just talking about like you know the color itself i'm talking about the culture the strength the numbers the resources everything that means africa was taken from africa to a land that wasn't even theirs that was occupied by the red indians and then obviously they killed everybody there, enslaved us as a people there, and then built the country which was America. Now fast forward to 2020, the straw that broke the camel, camel's back in George Floyd occurred, and it took the whole world to be still, for people to understand the gravity and the magnitude of what black people have been screaming since. It took, it took COVID-19 to get the full attention of everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean even the corporates that can't make money because one of the reasons why they couldn't care about our plight is because they were still making money with or without us. Because I mean, we would still watch the NFL. We would still want to get nominated by the Oscars. We would still want a Grammy. <laughs> the aspirations are so high that even people at home want the American dream. And when I say home, I mean Africa. So I say all of that to say this. Enough is enough. And when I say enough, enough is enough. I mean, the protesting has gotten to a point whereby the whole world now knows what is up. The whole world now knows the value of being black. I'm seeing protests all over the world. And it's a very, very beautiful thing for me because now it's time for us to actually get what is ours. I mean, for the longest of time, shout out Trevor Noah, the discussion of the redistribution of the, econ the American economy has been a thing. But now it's happening in front of our very eyes without us even realizing because a lot of people are donating in the hundreds of millions. And anybody that understands what that means, just it just means one thing. It's the, it's the beginning of the building of a strong black economy. 
And the reason why I'm going to keep on preaching about the structure of the black economy is because of this. Because a lot of people say support black businesses, support this, support that. But everyone needs to understand the reason why. You see, when you have an economy, you have the leverage to actually buy your politicians. Forget about voting. And there's a, <laughs> there's a legal term for this called lobbying. And the only way you can do that is as a business, basically. The business will have representatives that will obviously pitch the interests of the company to the politicians and say, look, if you vote for me, I promise you that I will do this, this and that to make sure your company is okay. For example, stand your ground, the law. It enables people to actually buy guns, which automatically means that Walmart will increase in sales and money because everybody can buy guns. You just need a permit. Now, we see the background checks that will happen, but that's a different discussion for a different day. Now, if black people have an economy, right, and they can lobby, one thing they need to understand is you cannot literally, you can't take the steps that the people that formed democracy took. And I'll explain why. One person that is selected as a candidate to represent politics here yeah, still gives the illusion that the power is with that person. You understand? But if black people come together and unionize their votes, right? It is very obvious that the power is with 45 million people. So what happens is, with the economy we've put in place, we unionize the African movement, right? And then any politician that comes with the ideals that will allow Ameri and black Americans to thrive in the country, you get 45 million votes at once. Literally at once. And the reason why I'm telling us that we need to actually understand this concept now is because there is no politician that will not come and knock on the door of somebody that can guarantee them 45 million votes. And that is when they become yours. And when they become yours, the restructuring of the courts and the police automatically begins because that is our priority as a black race, you know? Another thing that has to be, you know, enforced when we get that kind of leverage is the reconnection of African Americans to Africa through citizenship. I'm not talking about migration now because we have the internet. Through citizenship, you know, through investing in Africa, you know, there are lots of things that the, the Western world benefits from Africa. But like Africa doesn't own any part of it. So we have to actually go back and reinvest so that apart from the, the, the raw material aspect of things, the processing, the manufacturing aspects is also invested in, which actually in, in, in it empowers the black, the black strength. And I'll explain why. Mm. You cannot afford to integrate if you do not have a base to retreat to. One of the reasons why they can't kill a Chinese man is because China is going to come sending bombs. One of the reasons why they can't kill a Russian, <laughs> even if America hates Russia, is because Russia would kick back. America only goes for people they can bully. You understand what I'm saying? Which is why if they can bully you, they'll just turn you to the enemy. If you don't have a strong economy, you're automatically a potential slave in the new world order, the definition of a slave. Now, like I, let me go back to restructuring the courts. When you restructure the courts and the police, right, as the black, you know, due to black leverage, then we have to have our own media because one problem with the internet or the TV or whatever you get in your news is most of the pieces of the puzzles you're giving to use to piece together, <laughs> they're actually given. Like CNN has given you the news that you're trying to figure out. BBC has actually given you the news you're trying to figure out. Same thing with Fox, all these news, and all of them clearly want their own agendas, you know. And one of the reasons why I need people to understand the concept of lobbying is because if you if, if you listen to what I just said previously. The Democrats and the Republicans have their own agenda, so what they're going to do is they're going to say whatever they need to say to get people in, but they're still accountable to the people that put them in power. So they get your votes, they go in, and once they go in, they, they listen to the companies that put them into power through sponsorships and anything, because at the end of the day, you're giving them votes, somebody's giving them money. It's the illusion of power. <laughs> anyway, once you get your media, you push your own agenda, you rally your own people, you do your own events, there becomes relevancy in your system because now you have the ability to push your own agenda. And then finally, and which is the most important thing is the education aspect. That's after media. Because once you sort out everything I've said from the beginning and the base level being economy, you can now employ your people. Your people don't have to go and start fighting with the white man for some position in the corporation. And one important thing I need to add is how the arts the act of creating because when i say art people think i'm just talking about music no if you can make a business you you, you are creative 
because you made something out of nothing through just sheer vision. If you make, if 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 you're a business owner, if you're an artist, if you're if if you're if you're anything that has to do with manifestation through thought, you are the ones that literally are going to empower the people through opportunity. And even at that, it's not for them to be your slaves because as black people, we actually need to take care of each other in a real way, you know, pay people what they are worth because the money is enough, the money is enough, the money is enough. In America alone, yeah, $1.2 trillion is generated amongst the black community and that money doesn't circulate once in the black community. The Jewish community, the Jewish dollar, it goes around 18 times their community, 18, the Caucasian dollar goes about six. So before, before a, a, a Jewish man goes to buy Gucci, he has probably bought something from his brother, his sister, his cousin, even someone that he doesn't know that is Jewish. And that's why all of them actually dress a particular way because their culture maintains the system of their economy. They are not influenced by anything external. And that's another thing black people need to get back, their identity. And that's why the art is also important because that also gives you a sense of identity because our culture is heavily embedded in our arts, and that's why I love the Afrobeat movement. It's why I love how young people are invested in culture, because this is the only things that will actually this is the only thing that will actually restore us to what we used to be. You know, if you if, if you care about pre pre slavery history, go and research on the Moors. You know, these are you know intellects that actually influenced the Spanish and the Portuguese pre pre um, slavery. You know, but yeah, I mean, I hope I hope what I've said makes a lot of sense, Prince. Um, how many minutes have I used up on this oil? <laughs> Eleven minutes. That's very good. I think, I think I don't want to be talking too much about things that you know people already know. Yes, everyone keep protesting, please. And and one thing I, w I would say is let us try and build an online market space for Black people. You know. And honestly speaking, it's something I personally have a lot of passion for because as I'm saying this, I'm actually trying talking to a lot of people about building this in a real way that actually pertains things that matter. Things like goods, services, fashion, tech, food. These five categories are things that instantly people require. I know a lot of people are seeing the trajectory of the world. The internet is the next thing, you know? And that's why everybody's fighting for equity. People want to own parts of things that will keep on making their money continuously. So if you have a site that has, you know, um, what's it called, tech, and the reason why I'm putting this out there is because, look, I'm not trying to own anything or, or do anything because I'm okay. I'm not selfish. I want my people to actually grow in a real way, you know. And what's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. Let's just come together as a race to make sure we build, you know. And eventually, you know, if that marketplace grows, we can easily introduce our own cryptocurrency because you don't have an economy if you don't have a currency. And one of the reasons why cryptocurrency is not a thing today is because it's not a, un like, there's no... There isn't a market space that that predominantly demands a specific cryptocurrency. But if we do that, then it's not we are not competing with the dollar anymore. We've just generated our own economy because I know in Africa we compare our rates with the dollar. Oh um, how much is one dollar? You say five hundred naira or four hundred naira, you know. That's that's the dollar doesn't compare itself to anything, you know. The pound doesn't compare itself to anything. They just exchange because the difference is not one one dollar is about one point something. Um, pounds or stuff, or stuff like that. It's not anything that that requires comparison to actually reflect your GDP, you know. So I just feel, you know, these are the things that we need to do as black people to actually, you know, get out of the mud and actually like grow in a real way, you know. And yeah, I think that's what I'll say about that. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Done our podcast. Signing out. Peace. <laughs>